Welcome to the image editing tutorial video. Let's start out by opening an instance of Google Chrome on your Windows, Mac, or Chromebook computer. When in Chrome, um, we're going to start out by searching for an image that we're going to edit and manipulate. And this is useful because um, and some of you may have used the image searching in Google, but might not know about some of the extra features. So I'm going to look for an image of a funny bird. Funny birds, I guess. So to get to Google Images, search instead of all, you switch to Images. And now we just see a bunch of images of funny birds that we're looking for. But I want to tailor this search a bit more for some of the things we learned about in the concepts. So under Tools, we have these different um, search tools we can use. Size, color, type, time. Well, size is the first one I want to use. So I want to manipulate an image that's a higher resolution image. So I can look for large images, mediums, things like that. But I actually want larger than 2 MP. That stands for 2 megapixels, 2 million pixels. So I want pictures above that size. So now I've filtered to only looking at higher resolution pictures. I also want a certain type. We learned in the concepts about bitmap images and also vector images. So things like pictures and things like that are bitmap images. So I want to look for photos. I don't want to look at clip art and things like that. So photos, now I'm only looking at photos. The next thing is I want to make sure I have the rights to manipulate a picture that I'm using. So I'm going to go to usage rights and I'm going to look for labeled for non-commercial reuse with modification. So if somebody's labeled the images properly, these are images that I can actually use and manipulate and use in this course. So now I've got a better idea of images. I'm going to show you one other one under more tools you can actually go show sizes. And here you actually see the pixels for each image. And this can be very useful. Remember, starting with a larger image or more pixels, especially if you want to crop that image and focus in on a certain part of it, it's going to be a higher quality image. Okay, well, we're going to look at, let's pick an image here. I'm going to pick an image that has a background that isn't overly complex. We're going to take this, I don't know if this is a pigeon. We're going to click on that. We're going to click view image here, which is going to bring up a tab that only has that image in it. So here is that high resolution image of this gorgeous bird. It's probably not a pigeon, but we'll call it a pigeon. And I'm going to right click to go save image as. I'm going to save that to my downloads directory. Okay. Now I want us to open up a new tab and we're going to open up an image editor. And the one I've picked for us to use is pixlr.com, pixlr.com. There's other ones you can use. You can also use software like Photoshop or GIMP, which is an open source tool for Mac and PC. Um, we're using P Pixlr because everyone can use it no matter what kind of device you're on. When you're on Pixlr, I want you to scroll down. There's two flavors. There's Pixlr Editor and Pixlr Express. We're gonna use the editor. It might ask you if flash is turned on. You have to enable flash and allow it to be used um, to use this. So install it if you need to or anything like that. We're gonna open an image from our computer, from my computer here. And there we're in downloads. We're gonna open um, this image of the whatever type of bird it is. And so here we go. So there we have our, 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 our bird. I wanna show you some stuff in here. Um, at this image window that we're looking at at the bottom, it actually shows the pixels. So 4,000 pixels wide, so the width is always first, and 2,314 pixels high. You'll notice here it has 52%. This means, um, this is kind of the zoom that we're using on this image. If I put it at 100%, that means I'm looking at the actual size of the image. Now that doesn't mean the actual size of the bird, that would make it, let's even go to 100% here, you double click type in 100. Okay, it's not saying that's the actual size of the bird. What it means is every pixel in that picture is taking up one pixel on my monitor. It's a one to one relationship. Versus if I go back to that 52 amount, okay, now it's actually kind of um, zooming out. It's making the picture smaller on my monitor. It's still the actual resolution that's there. I haven't lost any pixels. It just makes it that I can look at the whole picture at once. So the first thing we want to cover 
We've opened the image, we searched on Google, and I want to talk a bit about scale. So we talked about scale or resampling an image. This is where we just change the amount of pixels, Does it have less pixels or more pixels. You go here to image and go to image size. Image size, we can see the width and the height. And I can change this here. I can change the width to a thousand. You notice how the height changes as well. And this is because we've constrained the proportions of the image. So kind of the aspect ratio or kind of the ratio of the, the, the width to the height is fixed. So if I change this image, now it's a smaller, it's been resampled to less pixels. It takes up less space and it's a smaller image. It has less data in it. I'm gonna undo that. And for example, if I went on that image size and I didn't constrain the proportions, then you'll notice I can change the width to a thousand, but it'll preserve the height. And here we get a very skinny, weird looking bird. That's one of the first things to learn is whenever you're manipulating an image, you always want to constrain the dimensions. You want the ratio to stay the same. Okay, the next thing I want to show you is crop. So there we could make the picture bigger or smaller. But of course, we can also crop the image. So this is the crop button right here. And crop essentially means we're selecting a certain portion of the image. And in this program, you just double click. And now I have taken out everything outside of that window or outside of that box, thrown it away and just used these pixels. Notice now that the pixels for the picture are smaller, but we're zoomed into that amount and that's the only part of the picture we have. And of course I could go and save that here and save that image and export it. So, okay, I would imagine, I hope, or I hope, these are likely things you've probably already done before. Okay, but I'm showing them to help you get familiar with this app, which is gonna let you do some more powerful things. These three boxes here, that's there called the lasso, this is the box, and this is the wand, are all selection tools. So here I have a selection tool where I can select a certain part of the image. But unlike the crop, I can do things with it. I could decide, for example, to delete there by pushing the delete key, I can actually delete that section of the picture. I'll undo that now. You can also use the lasso tool where you just draw what you want to select. Let's say draw, draw that and I could delete that from the image as well. Anytime you make a selection, the other thing I'll show you, once you've made a selection, if you hold down shift, you can always add to the selection. So notice I selected more or even more on top of that by holding shift. Or you can also subtract. On a Mac, you push command. I think on a PC, it's alt. And here I can take out things of the selection. And also under edit, you can also go deselect all. Now the reason why I'm sorting this selection, there's many wonderful things you can manipulate, but often with image editing, what you want is you want to isolate a certain part of the image, but cropping doesn't let you do it because you don't have something that's square like, like this bird. So we're gonna use the wand tool. The wand tool picks, once wherever you click it, it will pick anything around it that's similar. So I'm just gonna click it here. Notice how it selected stuff that's similar. You notice how the, the colors are slightly different, so it didn't go, but if I hold, if I click shift again, I can click on a bigger part of the image, even more, more parts of the image. You notice it's selecting more. I'll go up here where it hasn't selected some, There's as many places as I want. You notice that it's selecting more and more. Oh, down here in this corner. And notice it's not selecting the bird because the bird is a different enough color that it has no need to select the bird. Once I've selected all that, now I've selected all this beige background. Under edit though, I can invert the selection. So instead of selecting all the brown background, I have now selected the bird. Now here's what powerful, we know when we select things like text or anything like that, that we can copy. So we're gonna go to copy. Now, one thing in almost any image editing software you do when you copy, if you go to a new image under file, um, you can create an image from the clipboard. So we're gonna create an image from the clipboard. And we can also say that place whatever that image is on a transparent background instead of any other sort of background. So we create that, now we have our bird isolated from the background of the image. And this can be really useful because what if you wanted to put that bird in a different background? So as an example, let's say I wanted to use this bird in a presentation. 
I can now export this bird with the transparent background. Now, exporting a bird or any image with a transparent background is a bit special, and it gets into the type of files that we learned about. You learned about bitmap files and vector files. So bitmap files are ones where there is a every pixel has a color, and therefore there can't be anything transparent. A pixel can't be see-through. But a vector image is a bit different. A vector image, if you remember, it's kind of a mathematical um, um, connection. It says, hey, in this certain spot in the picture, there is a bird or a part of a bird or a part of an image or a line or a font. But it can say in this certain quadrant, there is nothing. It's transparent. So we're actually going to save this not as a bitmap or a JPEG type in image. We're when we're going to save it we're gonna switch it to what's called a PNG, which is a, a type of file where you can save things as transparent. So there, we're gonna save it as PNG, it's working. We'll call it pigeon, however you spell that. And we're gonna save it to our downloads. Now, just to show you what this is like, we're gonna actually go over and we're gonna open slides in Google, um, Google Slides. Let's see if we can find Google Slides. Let's see here, go to Google Slides. Oh, great, and we'll start a new presentation. So what I wanna show you here, we're gonna take away these boxes, and in Slides, we're gonna make a background that's a different color. Let's choose a background color of, let's go with a light green for fun. And now we're going to select an image and we're gonna upload it from my computer here. We're gonna find the pigeon, we've got the pigeon, open that. It's uploading, it's a big file, so it'll take a bit of time to load. I could have saved it, of course, if I had resampled it, I could have made it smaller in pixels and made it a smaller file, and would have still worked. But here comes my pigeon. So now you notice here I have this pigeon that I can freely move around and he's on a green background. So that's a really powerful thing that comes in handy. We're gonna learn as we do multimedia design that to affect learning outcomes, um, extraneous information, information that's not necessary um, for what we're educating can actually take away from learning outcomes. It can actually distract people. So often choosing parts of images can be powerful, not just from a design aspect and making things look pretty, it can also actually help from learning outcomes.